Today we have info on a vampire skeleton, a wrap up of last night's Emmy Awards, National Peanut Day, and much more. We have today's weather forecast with Lily Fowler and a sports update with Sire Hughes. Today is Tuesday, September 13th, 20, 2022. We are live from Studio H12 in the Shore Broadcasting Center at Bradley Central High School, and you're watching Vox News Today. Welcome back. I am Amber Filia. And I'm Ian Reardon. And these are your top stories for today. King Charles III was joined by his siblings, Princes Andrew and Edward, and Princess Anne, as they briefly held a vigil around Queen Elizabeth II's coffin on Monday evening. The royal family mounted their guard of the coffin at St. Giles Cathedral in Ed Edinburgh, Scotland, where it will lie until Tuesday evening. Hundreds of mourners were queuing outside the cathedral to pay their respects on Monday evening. The cathedral will remain open to the public overnight, according to guidance issued by the Scottish government. Two people, including a Toronto police officer, were killed in a pair of shootings that prompted an active shooter alert in Ontario Monday. The slain officer was one of two people shot in the city of Mississauga. The officer was there for a training exercise. A short time later, three more people were shot in a separate incident in Milton. Two victims were hospitalized and one was pronounced dead at the scene. The same vehicle was spotted in both shootings. The suspect was later shot and killed. Authorities haven't said what led up to the shootings. A prisoner has died after accusing prison officers of torture by forcing him to listen to children's song Baby Shark on repeat. Basco was among the four jail inmates suing Oklahoma County, accusing two former detention officers of forcing them to listen to Baby Shark on repeat while handcuffed to a wall. Two officers were fired, and the three others were charged with misdemeanor counts of cruelty to a prisoner and conspiracy. When Theo the Great Pyrenees shoved his face into a pile of sticks and branches, his dog walker thought Theo emerged with the usual stick. He was wrong. It was a knife. Quote, my eye caught the glint of metal and it was instant panic, end quote, said dog walker Matt. They tried to trade the dog whipped cream, then salmon. He traded it with salmon. In about two weeks, NASA scientists will slam a refri refrigerator-sized spacecraft into an asteroid called Dimorphos. The crash is a test and the asteroid is not threatening Earth. Scientists, however, want to see if the collision can change the asteroid's orbit. It's the first test of its kind and could be a crucial step in learning how effective a crash could be in protecting the Earth from potentially being hit by an asteroid. The mission is expected to happen September 26. The wreckage of a plane that crashed in Washington State earlier this month has been found. The float plane went down near Whidbey Island on September 4th. Ten people, including a child, were on board. The body of one person was recovered following the crash, but a search for the remaining passengers was suspended the following day. The National Transportation Safety Board says it is working to recover the wreckage, which is in water 190 feet deep. The Justice Department is turning up the heat on former President Donald Trump. Amy Kiley has the latest on two of its investigations that involve him. The Justice Department is taking major steps in two investigations into former President Donald Trump. Multiple sources familiar with the matter confirm it, rec it recently sub more than 30 of his associates. Among them are Trump's one-time political director, deputy chief, and staff of campaign manager. And the sub go beyond the Capitol riot. Monday night was television's biggest night. The 74th Primetime Emmy Awards. As usual, there were some expected winners, a few surprises, and more than one feel-good moment. 
David Daniel has our Emmys wrap-up. Actually, this year's Emmys were a bit more spread out, though there were some big winners, none bigger than, quote, the White Lotus, which led the way with five wins, including outstanding limited or anthology series. And now let's check on our weather. Lily, what can you tell us? It is sunny outside today, so stay tuned for what I have to say about the weather forecast right after this break. better than last week. I am Cleveland Ford. I am Cleveland. I am Cleveland Ford. I am Cleveland. I am Doug Beerthaler, General Manager of Cleveland Ford. And together, we are Cleveland Ford. Welcome back. I'm Lily Fowler with your weather. Here's your weather at a glance for today. The high for today will be 81 and the low will be 56 and it is currently 52 degrees. The precipitation will be 2% with wind of 0 miles per hour. Humidity will be 97 and the dew point will be 51 degrees with a pressure of 29 inches, a visibility of 7 miles, and a UE index of 0. Some middle school students in Wisconsin got a bit of a scare Monday morning. After their bus driver turned into the school, the bus got stuck in some high water and almost rolled over. The school says all the students and the driver were safely escorted off the bus. They just got a little wet. 
office, officials have closed the road due to the floodings until the water recedes. Now let's take a look at our national radar. There will be rain along the border of the state and up into the Canada border. And here is your local radar. There will be clear skies all throughout. And now let's take a look at our seven-day forecast. The high for today will be 81 and it will be sunny outside and the low will be 56. The high for Wednesday, it will be 81 and a low of 57 and sunny. On Thursday, it will be a high of 85 and a low of 58 and sunny. On Friday, it will be a high of 86 and a low of 59 and mostly sunny. On Saturday, it will be a high of 86, a low of 59 and mostly sunny. On Sunday, it will be a high of 86, a low of 61 and sunny. And on Monday, it will be a high of 87, a low of 62, and most sunny. That is all I have for your weather. Here is Sawyer with your sports report. Today we have the Cougar Reach, Bama and Texas close game, the Buccaneers and the Cowboys, and more are right this break. You can be the greatest. You can be the best. You can be the king. Come laying on your chest. You can beat the world. You can beat the war. You could talk to God. Go banging on his door. You can throw your hands up. You can beat the clock. You can move a mountain. You can break rocks. You can be a master. Don't wait for luck. Dedicate yourself to you. I am Cleveland Ford. I am Cleveland. I am Cleveland Ford. I am Cleveland. I am Doug Beerthar, General Manager of Cleveland Ford. And together, we are Cleveland Ford. of the fridge is just so interesting but we do know how to make appliances you can trust day after day after day after day i was told the place i was looking for didn't exist a place that could refine my raw talents into something greater where i could ask big questions about my faith not settling for easy answers and i could risk what's comfortable in pursuit of my dream to join with others find my voice and change the world I was told that place didn't exist. Then I found Leap. At McDonald's, we're making changes every day to serve you better. It's what we're made of. And serving you better means fresh beef quarter pounder burgers, your burger, his burger, her burger, all cooked fresh right when you order. Made from pure North American beef and just a pinch of salt and pepper because we think there's nothing better than a fresh beef quarter pounder burger made for you right when you order. And that's just one way we're showing you what we're made of. Well, you're wrong. I'm wrong? You're the one who misrepresented the facts. Are you kidding? Your proposal's ludicrous. My proposal ludicrous. will go exactly the way I say it will. my dead body. I think somebody needs a timeout. Civility. Pass it on. One grain of sand can turn the tide.
I'm sorry, huge Wizard Sports. Tennessee and Pittsburgh combined to play some ugly football Saturday. That doesn't usually bond well for the Vols, but this time UT pulled out the 34-27 win. The Vols started slow, something that's usually not an issue for Josh Hupel's Tennessee teams. Hayden Hooker and the offense went three and out of the game's first two drives and then turned it over down in his next opportunity after needing 10 plays to move the ball 36 yards in the Pittsburgh side of the field. Unfortunately, Tennessee's third quarter was worse than Vince's first. Young also spoiled what could have been a program-defined victory for Texas and Sarkisian after last season's 5-7 finish. Long court quarterback Quinn Errors was knocked out with a shoulder injury at the end of the first quarter. Sarkinson said Errors had a sprained clavicle and would have more tests to determine how bad it is. Young's clutch play rescued Alabama on an uncharacteristically sloppy day for the Christian Tide, who struggled with penalties and drop passes and was forced into six consecutive punts in one stretch. In the NFL, Tom Brady tapped into his younger self despite being the first 45-year-old starting quarterback in NFL history. The whole Tampa backfield looked impressive Sunday night as Leonard Fournan ran for 127 yards and the Buccaneers dominated the Cowboys 19-3 in the season opener Sunday night. Cowboys owner Jerry Jones said after the game that Prescott needs surgery for a fracture near the thumb on his thumb and hand and will miss multiple weeks. This could be a season alternating blow for the defending NFC East champs. Last night, there was major drama in Seattle and a thriller of a football game. The first bit of drama was Russell Wilson as a Bronco returning home to Seattle. The other major bit of drama can be found in a very controversial coaching decision by Nathaniel Hackett during what was a potential game-winning drive for his Broncos. Star quarterback Russell Wilson was pulled off the field in exchange for a 64-yard field goal attempt that both missed wide left and the left penalty of confusion of NFL fans to digest. Rather than decision being correct or not either way, the Seattle Seahawks celebrate a surprising 17-16 victory over the Broncos. That is all I have for sports. Stay tuned for more news right after this break. CRCC to me is um, a calling that God placed on my life to really step out in faith um, on something that I didn't think I could do, and it's been amazing to see how God's worked through it. Uh, CRCC stands for Crossroads Community Church, uh, uh, but we're a church that our vision is to be a life-giving church in our community. Uh, we do that through helping people know God, find freedom, discover their purpose, and then go make a difference. And so that's what we're doing every week is helping people discover their jam and go make a difference. I am Cleveland Ford. I am Cleveland. I am Cleveland Ford. I am Cleveland. I am Cleveland Ford. I am Doug Beerthaler, General Manager of Cleveland Ford. And together, we are Cleveland Ford. I am Cleveland Ford. I am Cleveland. I am Cleveland Ford. I am Cleveland. I am Doug Beerthaler, General Manager of Cleveland Ford. And together, we are Cleveland Ford. 
Hey guys, this is Austin with Let's Bounce Rental. We're here to provide a quality inflatable for a great price. We have over 17 that's available, and you, we are easy to book and hassle-free. So you will never go wrong with getting a party done by Let's Bounce Rental. We are always here to grab a great service. Our crew is dedicated to make sure your equipment arrives on time, set up properly, and without any hassle. Our job is to make sure you have access to the best inflatables so you can have the most fun possible at any event. Whether it's a school event, church gathering, or birthday party, we have the equipment for you. The best part is that we are a locally owned company. We pride ourselves on making sure our customers are taken care of. So the next event you have, plan for success with Let's Bounce Rentals. Call us today at 423-435-4311 or reach us by email or website. Thank you. Welcome back. In an unusual discovery this week, the remains of a female vampire were unearthed at a cemetery in South Poland. Researchers from the Nicholas Copernicus University in Turin came across the remains of a woman with a sickle around her neck and a triangular padlock on her foot at a gravesite in a small village in, in Peen near Krakow. According to ancient myths, the farming tool was supposed to prevent those who had died from returning from the dead. The sickle and the padlock may have been protected against the return of the disease, which was probably feared. Two rock and roll legends are officially on the state's tourism map in Knoxville. A new Tennessee Music Pathways marker was unveiled Monday morning at Everly Brothers Park with members of the late Don and Phil Everly's family in attendance. The marker highlights for park visitors the brothers' great successes in rock, pop, and country music. They reached the height of their popularity in the late 1950s and early 1960s, but their influence resonates today. The brothers were part of the first class of inductees in 1986 into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Ohio, along with Elvis, Little Richard, Chuck Berry, Buddy Holly, Fats Domino, and a few others. U.S. sailors received a hero's welcome home at a Virginia Naval Station Monday as they returned from their deployment in the Mediterranean Sea. Officials say the sailors left with one mission that quickly changed after Russia invaded Ukraine. As Brennan Ponton reports, their families are just happy to have them safe, safely back. For the first time since December 1, 2021, the thousands of sailors aboard the USS Harry S. Truman can embrace their loved ones again. America's Churchill Museum in Missouri has a new exhibit featuring some artifacts from Queen Elizabeth II. They include a picture of her coronation signed by the Queen and a prayer book signed by her mother. A letter from King Charles III is also a part of the exhibit. The friendship between Queen Elizabeth and Winston Churchill was well known. The pair became close after she assumed the throne in 1952 when Churchill was serving his second term as Prime Minister. The museum was founded to commemorate him. It has been preparing the Queen Elizabeth exhibit for some time. McMinn Humane Society is struggling to find homes for over 30 dogs they rescued from a hoarding situation recently. Over the weekend, McMinn County Clinic staff assessed a hoarding situation. After the assessment by clinic staff, they determined they could not leave until they removed the dogs from their current living situations. During the first trip, they removed 21 small dogs from the property. They, found, they have found homes for a few, but they still need one. There are still, still 12 to 15 dogs left on the property, but the clinic says they cannot take them until they have placed the ones they have. The Somerville, Georgia flood impacted many businesses and the effects are still being felt today. The Chattooga County Tax Assessor's Office was closed Monday as construction went underway to repair the damage from the flood. They had planned to open at 7 a.m. this morning. A shooting this afternoon has shut down a portion of Thunbarrel Road near Erlanger East. Police say it is an active scene with road closures and ask that the public avoids the area while the officers and investigators work. Just, just after 5.30 p.m., Chattanooga police responded to multiple party shots. Police were first notified by a local hospital of a 23-year-old male victim who walked into the ER with a gunshot wound. Upon arrival, police secured the original location of the crime scene. The cause of the incident is yet to be determined. No other victims have been located at this time. 
It is an active scene with the road closures and the CPD requests that the public stay clear while officers and investigators work. The Lookout Mountain Judicial Circuit says on August 9, 2022, 42-year-old Jeffrey Lee Zelko pled guilty to incest and child molestation before the Honorable Ralph Van Pelt, Jr. Zelko was sentenced to serve 15 years in prison, followed by 25 years of sex offender probation. The victim and her family, who were present in the courtroom at the time Zelko was sentenced, supported the plea agreement to prevent the victim from having to pu publicly testify and relieve relive the trauma she had already endured. Initially, the victim disclosed to a family friend that Zelko, a relative, had been molesting her and was later inter interviewed at the Children's Advocacy Center where she made additional disclosures of sexual abuse. Monday night was television's biggest night, the 74th Primetime Emmy Awards. As usual, there were some expected winners, a few surprises, and more than one feel-good moment. Reporter David Daniel has our Emmys wrap-up. Tonight, we celebrate the hundreds and hundreds of shows that were produced this year, and then we give awards to about five of them. Actually, this year's Emmys were a bit more spread out, though there were some big winners, none bigger than The White Lotus, which led the way with five wins, including Outstanding Limited or Anthology Series. Succession! The night's biggest nominee, Succession, won Outstanding Drama Series for the second time. Though of its record 14 acting nominations, the only cast member to take home an Emmy was Matthew McFadden. I must say it really is such uh, a pleasure and a privilege for me to play this bonkers gift of a role <laughs> in this wonderful show. Ted Lasso! <laughs> for the second straight year, Outstanding Comedy Series went to Ted Lasso. Its stars, Jason Sudeikis and Brett Goldstein, each won their second Emmys. I will never take it for granted. It's incredible. Julia Garner won her third Emmy for Ozark. Zendaya won her second for Euphoria. And Jean Smart won her second for Hacks, her fifth Emmy overall. Legion J! <laughs> Squid Game made history as the first non-English language series to win Emmys, taking actor and director trophies in the drama category. Quinta Brunson, <laughs> Abbott Elementary. Some of the night's biggest ovations went to Abbott Elementary. The show's creator, writer, and star, Quinta Brunson, won a writing Emmy, and supporting actress and a comedy winner, Cheryl Lee Ralph, stopped the show, drawing standing O's when she won, when she sang, I am a woman, I am an artist, and I know. And when she spoke, I am here to tell you that this is what believing looks like. This is what striving looks like. And don't you ever, ever give up on you. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. It's a day to celebrate one of the most versatile nuts of, of them all, the peanut. September 13th is National Peanut Day. Peanuts aren't actually a nut. They're legumes and fall in the same family as peas and beans, and they grow underground like potatoes. They weren't popular as food until the South's cotton crop was decimated by pests in the early 20th century. Dr. George Washington Carver, a black scientist and inventor, was researching peanuts and encouraged farmers to grow them. Peanuts pack a ton of protein and can be found in deserts and sa desserts and savory dishes or enjoyed solo. You can share your love for peanuts on social media with the hashtag National Peanut Day. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. You'll also find more online on our website, bchs.tv. Please remind your friends to like, subscribe, and share on our YouTube channel, BCHS Bear Network. Tune in each week for our newscast. You just can't get enough Fox. That is all we have for you today from Studio H12 in the Shore Broadcasting Center at Bradley Central High School. From all of us with Vox News, thank you for watching. We hope you have a splendid day. And as always, God, God bless and go Bears. Bears.